So I mentioned yesterday that I'm going through the Avaduta Gita, which is kind of a treatise on that Advaita Vedanta, that one without a second, that God alone is and everything else is unreal. And of course, I love uh, those ideas and have always really enjoyed meditating on them and just letting my usual approach to the world and to life be completely undone, really. And so one of those verses that I've really enjoyed the last couple of mornings sitting there, <laughs> well, I confess, with a cup of coffee and just ruminating, letting, letting these ideas just kind of wash through me and have their effect as I try and plumb the ideas, uh, the, the implications of what they mean. So this one is in the first chapter, and it's verse number 12, if you ever want to look it up. It says, Know the self always to be everywhere, one and unintercepted. I am the meditator and the highest object of meditation. Why do you divide the indivisible? So you just take each little component of this and put it in the mind and think about the words and what they mean and the implications on the way that you view the world. And it's wonderful like when you're standing in the grocery line at work or when you're sitting in the car on the way to work to just try and take a perspective that includes this idea you know, to actually realize it is a very high thing and it's a very, it's a very lofty ideal. So it's not like I'm telling you to, you know, see the world this way and everything will be different. Of course it would be. But I'm saying try and make room in the way that you perceive the, room, the world to make an allowance that just maybe this is real. So he says that the self is always to be everywhere. Everywhere. Can you think of any place that you're looking right now or that you can think of right now that isn't included in everywhere? So think about that, this self everywhere. And how can that be true? What are the number of ways? One is that it's everywhere and we perceive it everywhere. It's perceiving itself. The other is that everything is mind. And since all perceptions happen within mind, that, that that's one of the truths, or perhaps you don't have an existence. Those are the three options, really. Maybe you can come up with a fourth. I haven't been able to. But this notion of, of this self everywhere. And also, if you're, a, if you're a devotee, if you like devotion, you're not so much into philosophy, then when it, if you're reading a scripture that, that is primarily Advaitic or, or you know, uh, non-dual, Whenever they have a capital letter S, self, just substitute the beloved or God in there and it'll read the same way. So you can read this like that, you know, that the self, know the self always to be everywhere, know, know the beloved to always be everywhere, one and unintercepted, one and unintercepted is the idea of God. And so this, this idea of this oneness, you know, if it's everywhere, we'll call that oneness. And unintercepted means without a gap. So there's, there's no way of pinpointing where you end and where God or the beloved begins or where you are and where the self begins because there is no gap. There is no place in there. It's very much like trying to figure out what this moment is. Is this, when, when, when does this moment exist before it becomes the past and before it comes out of the future? At what point is it here? And you find that that measure can't be intercepted. It doesn't really exist. It's, it's, it's impossible. And so that's the nature of this beloved. That's the nature of the self. And that's why it's so hard when we're accustomed to using the mind to understand things with a subject-object idea. We can't do it. And that's why it's a realization. <laughs> it's why it's something the mind's not going to grasp. It has to be intuited at this point. So intuit this oneness that is everywhere without a gap, unintercepted. I am the meditator. So if you're meditating right now, the self is that. And the highest object of meditation. So the highest ideal that the mind can conceive of that is the self. Why do you divide 
the indivisible. How do we divide the indivisible? You know, it's part of the way the game is put together. I think of it in the fact that we're seeing and enjoying this oneness, but we've been given five holes through which the oneness comes into us, you know, your five senses. So that which is a whole comes in through five different portals into your awareness. And so naturally, you know, with a limited mind that then tries to take these five different pieces and reconstruct the oneness of the, of the reality, it's going to have a hard time doing it. That's what makes it so difficult. So sit with these ideas. Know that your beloved is so close to you that love, the other name of God, is everywhere. That beauty, the other name of God, is everywhere, undivided, uninterceptible. That it is you without another. Keep opening, keep opening, keep opening.